Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to recruit experienced painters to paint along with me. And today we're going to do something kind of fun. We're actually going to um, learn how to colorize um, a photo that we've taken so that we can use it for painting. And it, it's not hard, um, but you have to have, um, at least for this particular, the, the app I use is Prisma, P-R-I-S-M-A. And it's uh, for the iPad and the iPhone. And it works um, pretty well. I, I really like it. I've used it, oh, for years. And my uh, iPad is an old iPad, so I know you can upload it even to an old iPad. I don't know how familiar a lot of you are uh, with, um, you know, the apps that are out there. I will tell you that Android um, probably has a version of this, but I looked all over and I could not find it. So this, if, if you have an iPad, and I have the light turned way down today because, as you can see, it reflects. But this little A with the circle, that's your app store. So... It's usually on your iPad or your iPhone, and um, you want to go there in order to get the app. And when you click App Store, there's a little, um, like a magnifying glass, and usually somewhere on the page at the top, uh, you're going to put in Prisma, P-R-I-S-M-A, and it will bring all the options up for you. If you have an iPad, put in Prisma for iPad, because it might be a different version than Prisma for iPhone. And um, that will get you to Prisma. Now, Prisma is this little triangle. Okay, and I'm gonna hit Prisma, and it's gonna open up. And when it opens up, it's a black screen, and it has a little camera, and it says gallery. I'm gonna to go to the gallery, and you have to be careful to hit just gallery. It will give me all the pictures that I have in my on my iPad. And if I hit the picture I want to use, it will come up. And sometimes you get this too. Just click the X and it will disappear. It's always trying to sell you the paid version. This is a free version. And it's awesome because it is free. Now down at the bottom here, you see all these little pictures. Those are samples of the artwork that this can be translated into. And there's a lot of them. Some of them have a little lock on them, like this. If they do, that means that you can't use it unless you pay for the version, and you don't want to pay for the version, so stick to the ones without the little lock. There's also a library right here that you can hit, and it will take you to the library page and you see these locks? You can't go and use these, but you can scroll down and you'll get these. And if you want to see more, you hit the see more and it will give you all the options that you have. And a lot of these are already on your screen, but these are other options that you can use other than those that are on your screen. So we're gonna hit the back button to the library and the back button again, take you to this page. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite uh, photos. But before I do, um, this is what my brother did. It's colorized. He did this on Photoshop, I'm sure. He did not do it on this app. But this app is so easy. That's the reason I like it. It's like a one touch. Okay, so I'm going to take the photo now. Really pay attention to the photo because it's going to change dramatically. And I'm going to go down here. I have three that I really like. One is called Tokyo, and it's one of my favorites. So now the photo is gray. And I'm going to hit Tokyo, and the photo colorizes. Now Tokyo does a subtle colorizing. Then I go down. My next favorite is Dallas, and that's right here. And I'm going to hit Dallas. This is going to take a little longer to come up. And you'll see it has a little more color in it. Give it a minute. And the blue is a little closer to what my brother did. You can see here. Okay. 
But I think what he did is closest to, it's called colored right here. I'm gonna hit that. And see how the colors are very vibrant? Here's this one, here's that one. So that just gives you an idea. So that's how I would colorize um, like a barn or something like that. Now the other thing you can colorize, and let me pull it up here, let me, I'm gonna X this out. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna get this, which is a picture I took of a hydrangea. Okay, now look at the leaves on that hydrangea. See how they look? They're textured, right? Now let's go back to Tokyo, right here, and I'm gonna hit that. Watch what it does. Look at the texture on those leaves. Look at the colors. You can see blues and deep blue green, and you can see um, shading green. And down here, there's like a corally pink. Dallas, that's Dallas. Look at the colors, look at the difference. And finally, if we go down to colored, which is the one I used for the barn, it does everything in the blues it is. Gothic, look at this. You could do that for a fall plate. Wouldn't that be pretty? Something really different. And then the other thing I wanted to show you, and this is really cool. I'm going to close this out. Okay, remember my apple plate? Okay, here are some other ways you could do the apple plate. You could do a turquoise background, make the apples a little more of a yellow red with some yellow. This is gothic. Could have made them yellow. Could have made the leaves a little darker, like browns and blacks, and then done some yellow in the background to really make it different. And I like this one. Now this is Tokyo again. And as you can see, it gives you a lot of options for the background and the colors that you can use. But the other thing it does, and let me just increase this here. Do you see how it shows you where the highlights are on the, on the leaves? It shows you where the highlights are on the apples. And let's get some leaves up here. Look at those leaves. It really helps you with where the highlights are and colors you could use. You can see it has a chartreuse, a moss, um, almost a blue-green, um, a deep blue-green, a black-green. I mean, there's tons of colors that you could use there. That's the Prisma app that I use to help me colorize some of the photos that I want to work on. And it helps me find texture, helps me figure out some new colors I can use. And it also helps me uh, with uh, where the highlights go on different pieces. When I take a picture and I'm working from a, a flower or something like that, I can, I can use that to help me. So this is uh, a tile that I bought at a secondhand store. It had a tile in it, a six by six. I know that's what my tiles are. So I bought it, I broke out the tile, and I painted this black. And then I'm gonna put the final product in there, and you see it's really gonna look sharp. The colors for today um, will be egg, um, yellow red. You can use baby blue if you're just using a, a regular beginner's palette. I have two other colors. These are Paula White's colors. Here, let me turn this up a little because they're kind of dark here, there. These are Paula White's colors. One is Tahiti and one is cool green. And this is actually, even though it looks it looks like egg, it's sunflower. Those are all Paula White's colors. When I, I, I just love her colors because they're very vibrant. Moss, black, and yellow brown, which you can see is very close to the egg too. So the way I did it so far is I traced it on. Now, to trace it on, you take your your picture, you shrink it if you have it on a computer, like a full page, like the one I have behind me here. You're going to shrink it on the computer to the size you want it to be. You're going to take any transfer paper you have. This is Sorrel Wrap. The darker side goes down on the tile, and then you put the, um, the piece that you're tracing over the top, which is what I did. I used a ruler to help me trace some of these lines because I'm not very steady at times with my hands. And so I like to make sure that I get things to look fairly clean when I'm first doing them. But this is a, a rusty old broken down barn, so the lines are crooked, big deal. 
Um, and then it was all red originally from the transfer paper. And then I took my pen and ink and I used black paint and just took my pen and mixed it with the pen oil and, and did this. Now, for those of you who are beginners and don't know how to do this, I'm gonna tilt you down and that's where we're gonna start. So, I, you, I usually mix my paint the way I normally do, but you can start from um, powder if you want. And sometimes that's easier, but I'm just gonna start from the paint that I already have here, just so you can see as an example. And I put it down like that. And I have two kinds of oils that I can use. AMP5 Easy Flow. I get it from Dallas, China. And this is AGS21 drying oil, drying pen oil. And I also get this from Dallas, China. And I, um, so you can go to DallasChina.com and order any of these. They have big or small amounts, but this amount will definitely last you. And if you're not sure, there's nothing on here tells me how much this is. You can always call them and they're very friendly and ha happy to work with you. Now, I would mix the drying oil. And the reason I say that is because when you're working on this piece, because it's all lines, if you're right-handed, you work from left to right. If you're left-handed, you work from right to left to keep your hand out of your work. The drying oil, as you work from right to left, will dry to the point where you could just even put your fingers on it by accident and it won't change what you put there. So that's the reason I would recommend it. You're gonna take, um, I use my palette knife, put a little on your palette knife, just mix it in. I think that's a little too much, so I'll take some off. And you want it soupy. And this is what I mean by soupy. And one way to test it is hold it up, and it should kind of just barely, it is, see, it's forming a drip. Drip off the end like that. Did you see that? Yeah. So that's how you know that it's ready to use. And then I use a pen. I like these pens. You can get the pens with the wooden bottoms on them. The nib is what's important. The nib is the nib is a 102 that I use. And if you're uh, using and you're you're you know getting the paint on and trying to get it to come off and you know your paint is good and you you know that it's your china is clean and that it's not something on the china that's holding it up chances are it's your nib it might be broken it might be worn so always keep extra ones mine's like i said a 102 and i just scoop up the paint with the side of my nib <laughs> i test it on my tile by touching because otherwise you can get this monster glob and it's really hard to fix and then I just draw right on my tile. You wanna hold it up, up and down uh, on a slight angle, but up and down. You don't wanna hold the, don't use the back of it, it won't work. Don't use the side of it, it won't work. Okay? So that's how you mix your paints for the pen oil. And that's how you apply it. And you should have no problem. When you're done, make sure to clean your pen thoroughly and get all the junk out of it. Because if you don't, it's going to clog it up. And if your hole is covered, it probably won't work for you either. See the little hole on there? I, can you see it? It's like right in the middle on the top, right up here, just below my finger. If that's blocked up, you're not going to be able to paint. Okay, so I'm going to, now I'm going to let this set up a little so you can see how it sets up. Let me just, um, oh, I've got it on there. I've got it on here. I'll let, leave it set for a little while. I'm going to wipe this off of here so I can use it. Okay, now the study for um, this is available on my website. And... Um, you should be able to very easily go there and download the study. Now, when you get it, 
It will look like this right now. It's a study. It will tell you the tools you need. It will also tell you a beginner palette and an advanced palette. So if you're uh, if you have a lot of paints, you could use these. If you don't, you can use these. Actually, it's pretty much the same, except instead of pompadour, I use uh, yellow red. Um, and then it'll remind you of some things, and it will take you step by step. I'm going to start out using a square shader. So I fired this so I don't get into it. And I think if you're the type of person that... Um, you know, wants to make sure it turns out well, it's probably the thing to do. Oh, I wiped that off. Sorry, I didn't let it set up, but it does dry really hard. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with my lightest colors and go to my darkest colors. Otherwise, they'll smear. And I don't know if you can, let me pull this up a little bit. You can see the colors back here on this. This is uh, one that I'm using to work from. There's a smaller version, so you can see it a little better. And um, if you go from the yellows, to the darker colors, there's less likely that it will smear and it will keep your colors nice and bright. So I'm starting with my yellow, just a full load. There's nothing hard about this. So if you're a beginner, this is like perfect, perfect, perfect. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kinda put it on here and I'm looking at my study and I'm putting the yellow wherever it is on the study and that's, predominantly why I did it this way is so that it's wherever it is on the study. Um, so we have yellow up in here and you can go across them. You don't have to just go to one or two of them. And we're gonna bring the yellow down in here a little bit because there's a lot of yellow up in here. And we're gonna bring the yellow over on this side of the barn. There's some down here. And I'm gonna have to add a little bit of oil and we're gonna put a little down in here. Make it as dark as you can. Wiggle. Do you see how I'm wiggling in that paint so that you get some nice dark colors there? And I'm gonna put some yellow there, a little yellow here. And then I'm gonna put some yellow, um, let me see, I'm gonna put a little more yellow up in here. And a little more yellow here. I'm just going to brush it in a little bit. Okay, so I'm looking at my picture. Here's my picture. So I've done the yellow that's here and here and a little bit here. So my next color I'm going to go to is the red on here. Now, clean your brush because you want the red to be vibrant, totally vibrant. And so you're going to get into your yellow red, wiggle it a little bit. Up in this area, it's going to be very, very dark. So up here, it's going to be dark. And you can kind of go across it because eventually, as you can see from this picture, we're going to be putting black over it. So it really won't matter how much red you put up there. You're going to be putting black over some of it. And you bring this red just down into the yellow. And you can use the side of your brush. You can use a smaller brush if that works for you. And you're just going to bring the red down. And you're going to put a little red up in here. And just sort of chunk it a little bit, like I did there. Because, you know, this is going to be... Um, this is falling apart, coming down kind of barn. Okay. There's red up in this section. I think you can see it right there pretty well. And it comes on the inside. Well, here it comes down the middle. So I'm just going to tap it down the middle. Over here, it's on the right side. So I'm just going to tap it, tap it. You want to be real, you know, falling down kind of barn color-ish. And then I have a little bit right here going over towards the window. A little here. So it's right on top of the window. And then under the window, I'm going to do it all in red. Because we're going to be putting black down there on the second coat. 
Okay, now I'm going to turn it upside down. I'll show you what I'm doing next. I'm going to do the red that's up here at the top and down the side and a little bit over here. I think this is easier for you to see the bigger one now that I've pulled it closer. So um, let me move my paint out of the way. You probably don't need to watch me, my, me use my paint now. and That might help. So this is what we're using as our guide. We're going to turn it upside down and we're going to be putting the red up in here and down this side a little bit right here. And then we're going to be putting a little red, oops, I forgot to put my yellow there, at the top of that. And it needs yellow at the bottom, and that was my fault. I didn't see the yellow at the bottom. So I'll get a little yellow and put it at the bottom here. Get a little yellow put there, and maybe a little yellow and put here, because those are places I mixed. But the problem is, see how I'm trying to put the yellow on now? It won't stay clean because, of course, I've already put other colors in there. Okay, there is a teeny tiny bit of red up in here. I'm gonna change brushes. I'm gonna to go to a really tiny little round brush. This is one of the brushes I got from Birgit Porter. Um, uh, she has a bunch of them. They're, um, I think, Danish or French, and you can order them from her online. And, um, I'm just going to put a smidge. I'm going to put a smidge in here, just a dab. I'm putting a smidge in here, a little bit there, a little bit there. And I think that about does it, maybe a little under the window here. Okay. Those rounded brushes are really nice. My number 10 is my number 10 that I've had forever. So, All right, so that's what I've done. I put the yellow on. And then I put the red on. Okay, next color now. You could go green or blue. I think I'm gonna go green because there's not a lot of green in here. Let me show you where our green is. So there's, there's some green up in here. There's some green up in here and down this side, over here, down at the bottom, and right back here. There's a little green up in here, not much. And you can throw it in pretty much anywhere you want. So if you can see it here, 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 it kind of comes up from the bottom, but then up in here I have a little green and a little green here and there. So I'm gonna go to my moss because my moss green is pretty vibrant. If you have a, a different green that's more vibrant than the moss, please feel free to use it. I'm gonna do it here, here, just try to put it on um, dark, not thick, okay? That's one of the things you want to do. I'm going to put it on up in here. I'm going to put a few lines up in there, a few lines down in here and down into here. Not a lot. And then I'm going to go down here and come up and do the bottoms of these. And maybe a little right in here. And the bottoms of some of these. There we go. And then over on this side, I colored it the wrong color, so I'm just going to put a little green over it. And I'm going to put a little green along, oops, a little green along the base here. Then up in the top, go back to my little brush, clean it all off, get my little brush. So that's what I've done so far. I've done the bottom. So almost like the grass growing up, but the grass in this case is actually um, in the, done in the yellows and greens. So I did a little green down here. I probably could do a little more over on this side here. Oh, that's too dark. I do want it dark, but you know, we've got another whole coat to go. You don't have to do it too dark. So if you do want to put a little green in the, in the grass, you can like that, like that. This is impressionistic personified. So you're just putting the colors in wherever you want it. And the fact that you already have the lines in 
It's going to save you a multitude of problems because you won't be messing up those lines. Obviously, you couldn't do these both together on a first coat. And now I'm going to put a little, just a little over in here. And maybe a little up in here. And there's a little up in here. Okay. That's it. I know some of you are going, oh my God, what is she doing? Okay, the next color I'm going to use, for me, it's going to be um, the Tahiti um, because I think it's the closest to the color my brother actually colorized this, and that's what I'm going for. But for you, it can be the baby blue, and you'll get an equal color. And let me show you. Here's the baby blue, and uh, this is, well, this door here has some blue on it. Oops, I didn't leave enough space. Let's do this one here. This has blue on it. Mm -hmm. I'm just coming using the, the side, the tip of my brush to come down because it's kind of a big brush for this. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this. Now this is baby blue. Now let me switch and I will use the Tahiti that I have. And if you want to try bright colors, I will say Paula White is the brightest colors I know. I'm going to put it here. Oops. I guess I should probably do it this way. God, I must have green in my hand. Okay, I'm going to put it on this little window here because the whole window is blue. Up, up, up. Come on. And see how much different it is than the blue? It's just a little darker, just a tad darker. I'm just going around that. And then the top of this door is going to be blue. Just touch it. Okay. The roof line is blue. I think this is kind of fun actually. It's fun because it can be anything you want it to be. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. This is blue here. These are blue here. Okay. Actually, most of everything that you still see as white is blue or, or it's going to be black. This is blue. This is blue. The windows. This guy's blue. This guy's blue a couple of places, but it's white in the middle, so leave it white. You can leave white on here, too, because the black's going to go in behind this. There's a little blue at the base here, a little blue at the base here. And then you're going to just take up in here and just suggest the blue. The crossbar is blue, but up in here, you're just going to suggest the blue. You can fix it on the second fire when you see how it's going to come out. And then I would put just a little blue in with the green over here, like that. And a little blue up in here with the green there. That's the roof. Okay. And then on this side, now you notice here, this whole section is not defined. And the reason it's not defined is because it's basically going to be black. So I'm going to put blue around the window on the little bars. I'm leaving the top of it white. And then I'm going to put blue under the window. I'm going to put blue down here. I'm going to put a little blue on these guys. 
And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do this whole section here in blue. And I'm uh, putting in my blues here. Now, I'm doing it upside down. That's not ideal. So leave some whites in there because you want to have, you don't want it solid blue, even though here it's solid blue. I don't think with China painting, solid blue does anything for anything. And then I have kind of a, this is a weird green, and I'm just going to put that there because I want a little bit different color. It's called Cool Green, and it's one of uh, um, uh, Paula's colors. And then up here, this is all blue. Okay, so now I'm up in this area. And down here, this is all blue. Oop, let me get the blue there. This is blue. This is blue. You're just, you're just painting it in. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. And then here, we're going to paint in the blue. Now let me show you on this little guy. I'm going to hold it upside down, and I'm going to paint from the bottom up and fade because I'm going to be putting black on last. Okay, so that's the last color I'm going to use is black. So let's get my blue here. I'm going to turn this upside down, and I'm going to paint from the bottom up. But I'm not going to paint this way, you know, with the flat edge. I'm going to play, paint across like this and pull it up towards the top so it fades. And as I go across... And the reason I'm doing this is because the black's going to come down into this area. So I want to make sure that I have ample space for the black. I'm going to paint a little bit of that around here. And then I'm painting the outline of this window in the middle blue. Pretty simple. I think anybody could do this because it doesn't require a lot of technique. It just requires a lot of imagination. And if you want to do it from the bottom up, you can do it like this. But see, I shake like a, like a leaf when I do that. Okay, here we go. Keep the colors as vibrant as you can, but don't get them too thick. You just want them vibrant. If your colors start getting too thick, clean your brush. And I'll put a little bit of this color under here. And a little up in here. There we go. Okay. So I bet you can guess what colors we have left. Okay, the color we have left is black. This is, go oh, I've got a little more blue up in here. I forgot about that. Right up in here. Okay. This is going to be tricky. I'm going to use a brush that's fairly easy to control. That's why I'm using this little rounded one. Um, I'm going back to my square brush because I think I'm going to do the biggest areas with the 10, number 10 square shader, and then I'll come back and do the others. So we're in the black now. We work from our lightest colors to our darkest. And I'm just putting in the black wherever it needs it. And I'm putting the black in on this door. This door is black. But try not to get into that green at the bottom. You can leave a little white at the top if you want. And this up here is going to be black. Oops, that's too tricky. I can't do that very easily. So I am going to switch to my smaller brush now. And I'm going to do the little panes up at the top. So see what I have so far? Now I'm going to do these little panes. I'm trying to hold this in paint. And as you can see, I shake a little bit, and that's the reason... Why I say if you, this is a good one for people who 
try to do the the barn straight, you know, some of the boards straight, and I, I just used a, I ended up using a ruler, and that, when I was tracing, and that seemed to help. Okay, I did that in. I'm going to come down here, and these guys are going to be done in. Now remember, this is the first coat of color. So if you don't get it super dark, you're going to have another coat to go. So the idea is just to try to get the color laid in. And it may take you three coats. You may not be able to get it that dark. You know, so don't panic. I don't think you could wreck it on three coats. So see, I'm going around up at the top there. So this is what I'm doing up, is up in here. I did this. Now we're doing up in here, and then there's that section over here that I told you was all black, because it's kind of falling in. So I'm gonna do it all in black, like this. But I'm gonna leave these two here. Actually, they should have been blue. That's my fault. So I will go back and try to add some blue there. And I'm just painting it in all black. Try to do it fairly smoothly because the black is like a you know big shadow, and the le the um, windows here are black except they have some reflective light in the back here. Can you see that? Um, I don't know if you can. Maybe on this one you can see it. I think I'm just going to ignore that, but I might leave a little bit of white. But it's not easy, so I'm just going to paint them black. Remember, artistic license, you can do what you want. Okay. And now the black continues. <laughs> We're going to do a little black here. And a little black in between these guys. I left them white, but I can put a color in there either this time or next time, depending on what I want to do. And then all these little triangles down here in squares are black. Now, I will put the colorize version. Um, I'll make it available with the study. So if you want to try your hand at it, you get the study. It's just $5 for the downloadable version. And it will have all the colors in it. And it will also have um, this version for you to work from, which I think makes it a little easier. But I just didn't know any other good way of getting this out to people. Okay. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then we're going to do it up in here. Down in here. Oh, need more oil. Keep it dry. If you get too much oil, what's going to happen is everything's going to start to spread. And you won't like that. So granted, this isn't your typical China painting exercise. But everybody's doing barns lately. I wanted to do a different barn. Okay, there's a window in the back here. Sorry, I taped that, so let me put it up here. See? It's in the back of the doorway. You can see the window. You can paint that in if you want. Um, It's just, a, it's just a small square window, so you could put a square window in there and do this and this and be done. I am just going to paint it all black, I think. I think it's just easier, but you can do whatever you want. 
Now, what if you get too much color in here and uh, you, you go over something you shouldn't have gone over? You can wipe it off. Remember, this is China paint. China paint is easy. We have to use my square shader. See, I've got lines there, right here. I don't want that. So I'm gonna go in with my square shader. Up. Let me get some color on there. And just pull it down. Make it a little better. Then I'm gonna take, really clean off my square shader because I just covered a couple of these. You see, I covered a couple of those right there. And I'm just gonna pull them out. Now, the roof up in here, this is all going to be black. You can do it on this coat, you can do it on the next one. But you're gonna start at the roof and pull down, straight down. We're not gonna hide this little guy up at the top. Lost my dark black. There we go. I'm using Best Black. It's not one of those you can find very easy these days, but if you can, it's a great color. I'm just going to do the dark here like this, and then I'm going to start pulling down. Up, up. And then I'm just going to feather it. Maybe feather it this way. Oops, I'm sorry. Feather it this way. And we're going to do over on this side. And up in here, I'm just going to... Oh, wipe off. Okay, need a dry brush. If this happens and you get paint on there, use a dry brush, push it back. That will always help. Okay. I have a little black over in here under the window. I have a little black here under the window. Hmm. I think that's about all the black we have. So I'm going to go back now, look at my piece very carefully, and see what I'm missing. And up here, the blue kind of got muddied by the black. Can you see on my ridge pole? So I think I really want that blue. I'm going to just go over it. And the same thing on this side. Pull it across. Just go over it. Okay. And, um, oh, I think I wanted a little blue couple other places. Let me see where that was. Oh, right here I wanted a little blue. Here I wanted a little blue. Um, hmm. I think that's about it. Now, the only other thing I didn't do, and I should have done it first thing, was put the yellow across the bottom. This is all yellow down here. But I'm tapping it with my brush because I want to give it the sense of being ground. So I'm just tapping my brush across the bottom. And then there are a couple little um, grassy things that come up in here, and I'm just gonna take my Pico Pay and create them a little bit in the black, because otherwise I won't have them. Just pull them up. There we go. Okay, so here's what we're working from. Oops, you know what? The only other thing I think I'm going to do is take my dry brush. And tap across the edge. See these right here. See how it's just, it's a little too 
to find, I'm just going to tap it with my brush, my dry brush. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and I think that will help it blend in a little more. Then I'm just going to pull it up a little. Dry brush. Remember, it doesn't have to be real dark on this one. Okay, so I just put in the shadow. Oh, there's a shadow line right here. I'm just tapping it in. Uh-huh. There's a little black there. Remember, the black will always go over your stuff. So if you missed some black, no biggie. Okay, now I think I got it all. So this is what I've done. This is what it looked like. Obviously, it's light. But that's okay. I'm going to sign my name. I'm going to clean this up a little, too. I don't know what this is down here. I, I'm assuming it's just junk, but I have to clean it up, get it off of there. And then eventually it will go in my frame, and it'll be a black frame. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it, because it is something new, and I thought it would be fun to do. And it just gives you some a, a, a new way of tackling maybe some of those photos of buildings that you really like and that you'd like to be able to paint. Uh, pick up those brushes and keep painting. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.